Episode 9 and episode 10 of the Last Dance documentary has finally come out, man. The finale is here, and they talk about Michael Jordan being one of the greatest closers of all time. This documentary closed out very, very strong, and it's time to get into another Last Dance review. Episode 9 in this episode. Let's go. What's up everybody, it's the Sports Code aka Aiden and welcome back to another video. This is episode 9 of the Last Dance documentary review by Michael Jordan, man. We're getting to the final stages, very, very close to the ending now and it's going to be a real difference maker after today to not be able to review any of these documentaries anymore, man. It's going to be tough, but the show must go on, their closing is here and it's time to kick things off with episode 9. Before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Sports Code YouTube channel if you enjoy these reviews. If you've enjoyed all the reviews that I've made, man, turn notifications on. At the end of the day, this has been a great documentary and it's one that was very surprising because we, we didn't know if this was ever going to come out. But now that it has, what an impact it's made. It's made things so clear for Bulls fans, NBA fans, Michael Jordan fans, the game of basketball. It made things so clearer to think of the mentality that he had and the, the high expectations and all of that, man, and all the things he had to go through. But enough about that. Let's go right into the start of episode nine, man. The first thing it went into was obviously the ending of episode eight was the Indiana Pacers and Chicago Bulls series. And Chicago Bulls came into this series very, very confident but um, the Indiana Pacers put up one hell of a fight. And they talked about the relationship between Reggie Miller and Michael Jordan. Now, obviously, these two are bona fide Hall of Famers. One of the, what if not both, are one of the greatest shooting guards to ever play. And they versed each other a lot, man. And Reggie Miller was one of the greatest shooters of all time. He's probably one of those people where, if you think of a player that hasn't won a championship, that's the one, you know? Like, um, and all of this, but... The thing was, the big difference was that Reggie Miller talked about when in relation to Michael Jordan, he doesn't fear Michael Jordan. And um, he said it on many, many occasions. He doesn't fear Michael Jordan. Um, he was he was one of the only guys to actually step up to him and um, and try to battle him. And that's that's the whole definition, basically, basically about the Pacers and the Bulls series, man. It was a battle. They battled with each other. And um, if you get something out of Michael Jordan that says bar the Pistons, you're the toughest team that we ever played in the East. That's a huge accomplishment in, in, in the Pacers' eyes. And they probably well and truly believed they could have won it. They could have taken it all the way. They could have won. They could have beat um, the Bulls. And they could have went on to the Jazz and, and beat the Jazz. And they, all, they truly think they could have won a championship. And that's what is heartbreaking for the Pacers the most is that they didn't win the championship and they didn't beat the Bulls because at the end of the day, who wanted it more? They said it in the documentary, who wanted it more? It was the Bulls, man. So Bulls end up winning in game one and then in game two. And obviously in game two, Michael Jordan was announced as the MVP, which was, um, you know, it is what it is. You know, of course, he's the MVP. It's Michael Jordan. It was either going to be Carl Malone or Michael Jordan. And they mentioned... A lot about the MVP race in the 97 season. This is all in the 98 season. Um, and then they talked about game four and how obviously the Pacers won game three. So game four, they talked about that clutch shot in which Reggie Miller pushed Michael Jordan, gave him a little nudge to create some space and he made the shot to which Michael Jordan responded with a very, very close buzzer beater on the other end. Unfortunately, it was just off and Pacers won game four, man. So just like that, they tied it up but they said like that was he double faked that shot and it nearly went in and that's the the greatness of Michael Jordan to near to get as close as you could get to a buzzer beater without going in was what that shot was and um it that's the greatness that he had that he was willing to take that shot Larry Bird knew that Michael Jordan um on the on the court it doesn't matter how many seconds they have left he's gonna take a shot up and and he could potentially make it so everybody was celebrating but larry bird that was a great moment in my eyes because larry bird that's the ultimate level of respect when you know 
even though you, you're in the front running to win that game, you're not going to celebrate until the game's over because he knew Michael Jordan was on that team. That's a great level of respect there. And of course, it's well-deserved. And then, okay. And then it goes back into the 1997 season. It goes into um, Brian Russell's, I believe his name is, from the Utah Jazz, who was a young player at the time who worked really, really hard. Um, he, he was uh, the one that was guarding Michael Jordan. But at the end of the day, Michael Jordan... He took a little bit of an offense to what Russell had to say back in a few years ago when he was retired, when um, he's saying, you know I could guard you, you know I can guard you, that's why you retired, man. And I know it's a bit of fun, but you know, Michael Jordan doesn't, he takes things personally, man. We've seen it through this whole documentary, MJ takes things personally. So even if it was just a bit of fun, a bit of banter between the two, he took that personally. And then um, he went to work and obviously Russell couldn't guard him, man. It's Michael Jordan at his peak, at his prime, and um, no one was stopping him. And uh, they went up 2-0, the Bulls, 2-0. But the Jazz were one heck of a team. And in my eyes, the Jazz were the greatest team to not win the championship during the Michael Jordan era. It's that simple, man. They were the greatest. They were, I, in my opinion, they were better than the, that Celtics team. They were better than that New York team, better than that Detroit team. I genuinely think that Utah Jazz team was the best team to not win a championship during that Michael Jordan reign. During that sixth championship run, that was the team, man. That And, and it's well-deserved. It's a well-deserved recognition, man. They probably could have won a championship if they, went, if they kept going. But yeah, man, like that's so... It was very, very tough for um, the Utah Jazz, man. And they ended up tying the game. And then it all went to one of the most iconic moments in history. So it first started off with uh, Michael Jordan was hungry in his hotel room. He went to, he called for delivery from a dodgy pizza place to which um, he ended up getting food poisoning at the end of the day. And it, they called it the flu game when in fact it was the food poisoning game, man. But it was flu-like symptoms. So... Yeah, he was basically food poisoning, but they knew through everything that they had to um, they had to keep fighting, man. So Michael Jordan was was really really sick in uh, I believe it was game five or or game six. Uh, yeah, it was game six, I think. So and, and he needed um, he needed the motivation to play. And when you're sick, you know. I'm sure we've all played a little bit while we're sick. It's not easy to play when you're sick. And sometimes it could be very, very bad. It could be very instrumental to a team if you're not if you're not up to it, if you're not up to the peak um, focus and conditioning as another team or another player, things can go bad. But what Scotty Pippen said to, in, in this documentary was really, really class and really um, important because it, get, it gives you another level of the of the motivation behind Michael Jordan, he said, well, "Usually, when you're sick, there's always that something in you that you didn't know that you had that comes out, and that's how you perform at your peak levels." Now, obviously, these are professionals. So I'm sure more times than not, nearly every player in the NBA has played while they're sick. So, yeah, it, 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 and Michael Jordan was having probably his worst sickness he could ever have. Food poisoning is no joke. Vomiting before the game. Uh, ex mentally exhausted, physically exhausted, probably dehydrated as hell. And um, yeah, and, and he still came out and he performed and he ended up carrying the Bulls to that win and uh, to that championship. And um, yeah, that was a phenomenal, um, that was a phenomenal series. But obviously the game seven was, was where everything went to, to, it went back to Chicago and they won it there. But the game six was the one that was most memorable because that's the flu game. That's the game that everybody considers the reason why he's the GOAT was a flu game because the flu game he played when he wasn't supposed to. He played when nobody else would uh, d d during that time. And that's that's what classifies him as the GOAT. That moment makes him the greatest of all time in many people's eyes. Bar the stats, bar the championships, that game makes um, Michael Jordan the greatest for a lot of people. And Again, it's a, not just another iconic moment in, in the life of Michael Jordan that we look back on and we think, how did he do that? How did he do that? How did he get to that position where he was ill, dodgy pizza place and all, food poisoning, throwing up, and he still ended up coming into the game and winning? And uh, yeah, not a lot of people could do that. I'm pretty sure 98% of the world probably couldn't do that. So it's very, um, it's why it's the most iconic moments in history, man, because 
how many people can you say had a flu game and ended up winning, especially in a playoff series like that against the Utah Jazz in the NBA Finals to take it to Chicago, man? Not a lot of people could do that, man. It's just the way it is. Not a lot of people can do it. And um, yeah, anyway, basically, um, it went it went to Steve Kerr now. And, and the, the reason why, obviously, it went to Steve Kerr is because Steve Kerr had a very good moment in that series where he... Um, he, he did something incredible, but we'll get to that later on. It went to Steve Kerr um, joining the Bulls and how he had to learn from John Paxson. And he studied John Paxson's game, the way that he was a perfect role player, helping Michael Jordan when in need and um, making sure his game contributed with Michael Jordan's. And Steve Kerr said, that's who I wanted to be. That's the guy that I needed to, that's the level and that's the guy that I needed to get up to. So... Again, he worked his career to basically be that player. And when he got into Chicago, he um, he had to earn Michael Jordan's trust. And by earning Michael Jordan's trust, you got to work for it. you got to be um, physically attached to the Bulls, mentally attached to the Bulls, and sometimes even emotionally attached to the players and everything. You have to earn his trust, earn his respect. And in the end... Um, it's a very, it's a very good moment for Steve Kerr because he ended up getting that respect. And obviously... Um, Personally, together, they didn't share many, many conversations. And this is the this is the sad part because obviously, um, oh, I went back to his dad, man, uh, Malcolm Kerr, who I believe was uh, uh, vice president or president of, of an education of a school. Uh, I'm not sure about all the details. Again, I don't live in America, so I don't know the school systems. But he ended up, the main part of this is he, he ended up being shot by two students after I believe the president was kidnapped two students shot Malcolm Kerr in the head man and um, that's something that those those two players had in common but they never spoke about which is very interesting as well because something like that there's something in common man you could share you could help build each other make each other stronger but for those two it was too painful for them to actually communicate with each other about those circumstances and that's um that's very sad in a way because it like if, if they were able to talk about it that trust would have got even stronger but at the end of the day um the pain that they would have would have had to go on through as men and as players uh it ended up being too much for them so they didn't they never talked about it they never talked about it at all but they didn't need to talk about it because look it, it, it's horrible what happened and it's it should never happen to anybody i say this and in America, this seems to be a big thing with gun gun violence, gun control and all of that. But at the end of the day, this should not happen to anybody, especially somebody who's done no harm to you, no harm to your family or anything like that. I don't know the full story, but something tells me if you're a president of a school or um, educational system within an area, there's not much harm that you're doing to the students. At the end of the day, your job is to help them. So... Obviously, people would misconceive that, misunderstand that, and then maybe that's how things happened. That's only a guess. I don't know how things went. They didn't go into full detail about what exactly happened, besides obviously the shooting and um, the kidnapping and all of that. And yeah, it, that life sucks, man, and it, sh it shouldn't happen to anybody. And I, I send my condolences and I apologize that it did happen, man, because it just shouldn't. It shouldn't be a thing anymore. It should never be a thing. But. Um, moving on to more of a positive note, uh, earning Michael Jordan's respect was a positive thing for Steve Kerr and it ended up working out as he made one of the clutchest shots in NBA history when he, um, when, uh, obviously Michael Jordan was going to get double teamed and, um, Steve Kerr on the bench saying, I'll be ready. And, and NJ was willing to count on him as the final shot. Now, during that game, Steve Kerr did not have a great game at all. If anything, he had one of his worst games of his career. But when the time was right, everything fell into play. Michael Jordan asked Steve Kerr if he was ready. Steve Kerr said he was ready and everything went into fruition. Michael Jordan got double teamed. Kicked it out to Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr took a mid-range, nothing but net, and um, they ended up winning, man. And they won. The, they won that series, and they won the championship. They won their fifth championship, man. And um, yeah, look, the Utah Jazz. I'll keep saying it again. They were gonna come back strong, and uh, in the next episode, we'll see how strong they they truly were. But at the end of the day, that was a great championship win, and. Um, we, we all realize 
that this could potentially have been one, if not the last of the championships. But they came back for another year. Thank goodness they did. But um, yeah, man, no one knew how long this was going to keep going on for because everybody was getting a little bit up there in age. Everybody was getting rather frustrated with their, their season. And the fifth championship, even like just the way that it ended, it could have been the last dance for that fifth championship. That's just me. No one's saying that in the, um, in the documentary. But the way that I see it, that could have ended and it would have been the exact same as the sixth championship. But six is obviously better than five. So it meant a, a lot more than people would realize. And they also went back to um, the 1998 season and they went back to um, Gus, who was a security guard for Michael Jordan. And he it was a lot more than a security guard for him. He was more like a father figure. Obviously, the pain of Michael Jordan's um, father's death, he needed a little bit of guidance and a little bit of an open-mindedness, a little, a little bit of maturity to help guide him through his career, his personal life, and all of this. And Gus was the guy, man. And um, he said he would take him everywhere. He would take him anywhere that he needed to go. And um, it was a very special relationship they had. And Gus ended up getting sick with lung cancer, man. But Michael Jordan, um, of course, like treated that relationship that they built was like a father-son relationship. So Michael Jordan was there making sure everything was okay, making sure that he was able to help, able to um, ensure that, you know, anything, everything was good, everything was all right, contacting their family. And again, yeah, like that's, that's a great, great thing that he was able to um, survive that, survive that lung cancer situation. And he was able to come back for that 98 playoffs in which they had the finals to come up, man. And um, he got the match ball in game seven against the, the Pacers in, in the 98 season. And um, they're going into the finals and they're ready and they're ready to do battle. And that's how things ended in episode nine, man. So to, to sum up the episode, what I think, I think this was a fantastic episode. I thought that this was a lot more basketball initiati initiative than people's past and their careers and less about the politics and more about the game. And um, that's what I really thought about this episode. It was more about the games being played, the, the thoughts during the games and the actual politics behind the games and all these events behind the games. But again, everything, all these episodes were great. And this is definitely a great episode to watch as well. I recommend you watch it. It was phenomenal. And we're going into episode 10 in the next um, YouTube video. We're going to do the next review, man, for episode 10. And we're going to finally close the chapter on The Last Dance. And this is going to be the last dance for this documentary review as well. So I want to thank you all for watching, man. Please like and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, turn notifications on. Share the playlist because there's we've done all 10 episodes, man. It's very It's been very tough. Very hard to um, edit these videos and everything, but like what an honor it's been. And of course, I'll go more into that into the next episode because it's not done yet. We've got a lot more work to do. So until then, man, have a wonderful and safe day. Take care and peace.